here. Welcome everybody. This is our very first Firefly community call. Uh, we're really glad to have you and uh, excited to kick this off for these first few community calls. Uh, we're gonna have a subject matter expert walk through a technical topic on Firefly, kind of starting with architecture and you know, flows through the system to help people get familiar with how Firefly works, how it's put together and all that good stuff. So Peter Broadhurst is gonna be leading the session this morning. Uh, so we'll basically take the first 30 minutes of the call. Uh, Peter will walk us through that. And then uh, we'll leave the, the last 30 minutes up for uh, discussion, Q and A and uh, whatever topics people wanna to talk about. I'll try to keep us on time. And uh, with no further ado, I will hand it over to Peter. Thanks, Nico. So, and you're gonna you're gonna keep me to time. We want to make sure that we try and keep the second half of this just for open topics. And those topics don't have to have anything to do with the the first half of the uh, of, of the of the meeting either. Um, we, we were thinking about what's the very first topic to kick it off. Um, and I think we'll be trying to influence the schedule for what other topics we do and who comes along and talks based on feedback from the community. We've had enough feedback to know that the, the next one is um, probably going to be tokens, um, but um, we're going to start um, at what feels like the beginning, um, because it's thinking about as a developer and, and Firefly is for um, developers blockchain or not blockchain is a very important thing. Um, what, 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 what's the first thing I want to do inside of Firefly? Um, I'm particularly thinking about the, the ping pong example we, we used during the kickoff, where there's a sort of mixture of coordination of some stuff happening on chain, some stuff happening um, off chain. I, I, want, I want to do some of that. Um, I, I want to do um, some things which I'm sharing with everybody in the network, some things that I'm just doing with individual members in the network, sort of privacy first um, approach, which is so common in enterprise scenarios. How, how does that, that work? What's the sort of fundamental model here? And, and um, what do I need to sort of understand about the model? But let's start um, from where you, you start as a developer, which is um, what, what's the first interaction with the API? So we're, we're gonna start here with sending a message. Um, a message is probably that um, if you sort of put blockchain transactions aside, and we'll talk a little bit more about those later in the session, we'll talk lots about them in future, future sessions. If you sort of put the simplifying talking to really sophisticated blockchain transactions aside, and you, um, what's the, the most important construct inside of, um, inside of Firefly? And it's probably this construct of a message. Um, a message is, a, a, an envelope really of one um, transmission of data with a, a signature if, um, if you choose to choose to have that um, from one member of the network to one or more members of the network. Um, and I, I think the reason to think of it like the envelope rather than the whole that um, rather than the letter um, when, uh, is because, inside of um, that, that message, you include data. That, that data, um, when you actually send the message, you can just put it there in JSON, right? You can just say, look, I only want one piece of data in this message and its value is a string of test. I could put in a sophisticated JSON object inside of this message. I could put five pieces of data inside of this message. But you could also have data that you're putting in the envelope and you're sending to somebody by doing either a send to an individual private message to somebody or broadcast to all of the network. You could do that um, based on data that you already have because you received it from somebody else or data that you have because you uploaded it because it was a hundred megabytes um, file. So when you're sending a message, you can either reference existing data that already exists in your private view of the world on your Firefly, or you can add data in line in that, in that payload. So the, probably the very first hello world you're gonna do is gonna look um, something like this thing on the right. I'm gonna, gonna say, look, here's my data. It's just in line. Um, it's there in the, in the message itself. Um, and, and you can do this using, for example, the, the, um, 
the uh, the sample application and Firefly samples that Andrew showed um, at the at the kickoff, and we'll make sure there's good links to that. Um, and you just say, look, here's some data I want to send. But you, but in the future, you might find you'll refer to data you've already uploaded. And we'll talk a little bit about how blobs work later. Um, go to the header of the message. Um, and the reason we put it inside of a header, that it's like the address on the front of the envelope. Um, it, it's, there, there is like some, some work done in Firefly to make sure that we hash all of this stuff in a way that the combination of the unique ID that gets allocated to the message, all of the data that's been attached to the message, and these extra things that you specify explicitly in the header, everything that goes into the header and comes back in the header, all that gets hashed together so that this message has a unique ID and it has a really unique signature in the world. It's just, just one transmission um, that, that you, know, you can look at and everybody who's involved in can see. So in the, in the header, I say things like, do I want this to be pinned to the blockchain? What transaction type is this? Um, so you might want it pinned, or there are many cases where in this multi-party network, you want it to be audited on your side in Firefly with the database, you want it to be audited on the other side in, in their, their Firefly, but actually you don't want any of the overhead of putting it on the blockchain at all. There's no, um, there's no reason you have to do that just because you're, you're using Firefly as part of the, um, the multi-party network. So. So um, you choose if you want a transaction or not on here, and you tag it to say the type of message it is. So this is a request, like my, my particular request message or you know, a category of the message. And then topics we're gonna to talk about in future sessions. It's like an ordering context. Um, everything on the same con uh, topic has to be ordered with everything else on that same, on that same topic within the scope of the group. Um, so, so that's an important construct that we'll talk about in future sessions when we talk about message ordering. And then if I'm not broadcasting it to the whole network, I need to specify who I want to send it to. And you do that using a construct called a group. And we'll talk about why having an explicit construct that is a group is necessary um, and what that, the value that that provides later. But just know for now, when you're sending your first message, if you want it to be private, you have to specify who the recipients are. And if you specify the same recipients over and over and over again, it will all be resolved to the same group. Um, and if you want to, for really detailed reasons down the road, you might want lots of different groups with the same participants in, you can customize it with a name. So one, one last thing um, is there is the construct, which more is happening as uh, Jim and others um, work on fabric channels and, and the like, the construct of a ledger that I, I want to attach this to. Um, so think about um, many networks only just have one, one ledger that everybody can see, but there are other networks where you actually want to have different ledgers that have a subset of people who can see and attest to that ledger. I guess the key thing to know is there's a big difference in Firefly. Just because you're all using the same ledger doesn't mean you all need to see the same data. Because in real business scenarios, it's much more common for um, different parties to be able to see different parts of the transaction, um, even if they're all attesting to that transaction, but it is that every party can see every piece of data. So anyway, that's, that's a message. <laughs> it looks pretty simple. It's very simple to send. You just do post to, mess uh, to, to send the, the message and that goes into the system. What happens then is it sort of gets split down reconciled with everything else that's already there. So maybe you reference some existing data, maybe you put some inline data, maybe it's the first time a group's been used um, that got resolved down, or maybe that group's happened to been used a million times before. Um, uh, all of that gets resolved and a, a bunch of things get stored locally inside of Firefly. So these things you'll, you'll see, there's lots of REST interfaces for GET, um, on Firefly and the UI shows and is continuing to evolve to show all of these bits of bits of data and you can see sort of like one piece goes in and it gets split apart and there's good reasons why it's being split apart but in this session we're going to talk about what some of that splitting is and why it happens so the three logical things that you might have put in the same message they get split apart in the data model that's that's part of Firefly and the message with the header and the hash and all of the, the, the like that becomes one thing in this in the system. The group is another thing that you can go and look up, um, and that gets referenced by hash rather than ID in that particular case. And the data, all of those individual pieces of data, whether they're new or the ones that you've already had, they um, all exist as unique resources and um, with REST interfaces in the, in the model. 
Um, just a couple of other things that we're not going to talk that much more about in this session, but I wanted to make sure you're aware of. Um, data is split between the stuff that is a value. It's like in line in the data that gets stored in the database. Databases are obviously not particularly suited to storing like a hundred megabytes blob. That, that's not really the right, the right balance. In fact, probably you get above megabytes and probably you should be thinking of a different storage approach. So um, the, the data exchange plugin um, that's uh, a pluggable capability of um, a Firefly that comes with a built-in one that uses a file system, um, you, uh, that's where these, those will be uploaded. So you can upload them on the Firefly API and you can download them and you have the nice multi-part upload that you'd expect, but where they get stored, that's a, that's a pluggable thing. So blobs are interesting. Um, and then the other thing just to mention here is that groups reconcile down to identities. Um, and uh, the inside of a group, each identity is a combination of an actual identity. At the moment, the only identities that exist are organizational um, identities. And those need to have been registered ahead of time. Um, but there's, the architecture will definitely support anonymous scenarios down the road. Um, and, uh, and also a node. Um, identities, uh, there is a plugin for identity, um, which is really a placeholder at the moment. It just maps one to one, where you might have an identity, which is a, something very, um, very flexible, like a DID, and then a, a resolution plugin that will allow you to resolve that down to signing identities and other, other identities in the system. But, but just, just know for the moment that there's a network map, and when you run your CLI, it's automatically registering all the nodes in your, in your CLI created environment. During the CLI startup, you'll see a bit where it says registering your org, registering node. Um, that's making sure that everybody in the network knows about the existence of that identity. Um, and that happens under the covers using a broadcast, which is one of the flows that we'll talk through now. So my message, little input message, bit of data, reference to a group, whatever, went in, got split apart into a message of group and data. Now this is happening in, you know, you get to production scenario, this is happening in volume, lots of these are happening, um, and uh, they are being accepted into the system, but there's lots of just chain of events that needs to happen from them going from their initial state, which is pending, to actually being confirmed in the system. And we'll talk about the importance of ordering in future sessions. But fundamentally, what Firefly is about is saying, we can have a shared source of truth. We can have a shared source of truth. And it's very important um, in many business scenarios that we know who said what, in what order. So just saying it is one thing, that's the send. What matters is everybody's heard. So things go through a life cycle where they, you get an acknowledged REST API call, you get a, an accepted 202 when you send the message. It doesn't become a confirmed message and the event that we'll see at the end that results in a confirmed message until all of the things that need to happen as part of that have happened. And we're gonna look first at probably the most interesting one, which is a pinned transaction, a very simple transaction um, which is just establishing the, or the originator and the sequence of a message, very simple transaction, um, uh, tied to a batch of messages. And we very deliberately in, um, have made it so that pinning, and this is from, from all the previous generations and the learning there, that um, you actually do need to batch things together to get the throughput that you need. So batching is an automatic built-in construct for pinning inside of Firefly um, that will work across ledgers, et cetera. So, um, so your messages get assembled with any other messages that arrive within a particular time window up to a certain cap. So I don't know, 300 messages arrive within a couple of seconds, you assemble those together, they go into a batch. And, um, uh, and then that batch gets a, gets a transaction assigned to it. And the transaction exists in Firefly. So you can actually see that transaction sort of set has a, it exists in your local database of Firefly as well as uh, propagating to the, to the blockchain. Um, just a placeholder here. It's really important to understand that Firefly is trying to simplify um, 
all of the things you might do in a multi-party system. We're talking a lot about a case where the transaction is very simple because we're focused on the on-chain, off-chain coordination. If you look at components that are pluggable like EthConnect inside of the system, interacting with super sophisticated smart contracts is really important to this ecosystem. We're not talking about it, not because it's not important, um, but we will be talking, um, but because really a lot of the heavy lifting that Firefly does is to enable all of the things that exist off chain to coordinate with those on chain things. So it's not that it's not important, it's just that the focus of that is all of the existing communities and reusing all of the, the investment um, and, and fantastic um, innovation that's happening inside of the individual blockchain communities and across the blockchain communities. That's what Firefly is there to do. It's there to harness that. It's not there to be the next fantastic implementation of a hash time lock on chain transaction, right? That's not the Firefly community's role. The Firefly community's role is to take that fantastic implementation that's just been done and make it possible for mere mortal engineers that write full stack web applications to build beautiful experiences on top of it. So watch this space for us to talk lots more about transactions in this session. The example transaction is super simple and it comes out of the box in Firefly because it's so simple, super simple. Um, <clears throat> so um, the journey we've been on so far is that we've got messages, we, we put a message in, it got assembled into a batch of messages and we said, well, the transaction gets associated with it and stuff needs to happen. There's another, um, another thing that you'll find pops up um, as a side effect of sending a message and multiple ones of them pop up for each individual batch. And the UI and the APIs help you join the dots between the message and the operations. An operation is an actual thing that actually happens in a plugin. So you've got a plugin for the blockchain. You've got a plugin for the data exchange that's doing things like transferring, transporting messages privately um, between two participants with the right level of transport security. You've got an operation for something like um, uh, storing um, the data in public storage like IPFS. Those operations are product, like they're, they're, they're infrastructure specific and they have a result, right? Depending on the way the plugin works, that result might come immediately. That result may come in a few seconds time. That result may be a success. It may even be a failure. So we have an operation, um, uh, a little resource and a very, very small resource there inside of, inside of Firefly for each one of these operations, each, each sort of bit of the plumbing that's happening on underneath this, this bigger piece. We do that so that you can understand what happened and you can see what, how to correlate the, the orchestrator with the low level pieces. So if you wanna go and look inside of IPFS, you need to know the IPFS ID. Where do you look? Well, because it's IPFS specific, it's gonna be in the operation because the operation is the mapping from a general I need to pin this data, I need to store this data in public storage to, to I did this in IPFS and this is the ID. So operations are super useful. Um, and um, in this case, because we're in the pin transaction, there's an operation that's gonna be sending the, and this, this case, let's think of it as private data. Could be IPFS, but think of it as private data. This is Peter sending to Gabrielle a, um, a, piece, of, a piece of data, completely off chain. That happens in one operation off chain. And then the transaction being submitted to the blockchain is itself a, uh, an operation. And what you'll see is a lot of work has been put into making sure that these transactions leak as little as they possibly can. So, um, so things like the blockchain plugins are able to do things like anonymous submission of the transactions, but that's protocol specific. So that's in the plugin bucket. Um, um, but the transaction data itself in, involves an ID uniquely generated for that one batch, so it doesn't leak. Um, a, a hash of the batch, which allows you to match the thing that you receive off chain with the thing that happens on chain. An idea of the transaction goes there as well, it has the same characteristics of being uniquely um, created. And then these pins, and we're gonna talk a little bit about those um, more in future sessions. There's not time today to, to go through them in detail, um, but we're, we're gonna to refer to them. And there's a pin for each message in the batch. And the pin is um, represents the um, 
that this message is sort of placed in the overall sequence. Um, it, 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 it doesn't get sequenced in the actual order until the blockchain puts the transaction in an order. But it's the thing that identifies in a way that is obfuscated for privacy um, so that you don't have this, like if you do five transactions on the same topic within a private context, not a broadcast context, you don't want there to be the same, same value in those five transactions. That's the cleverness under the covers that we'll go through in the future, in the future um, one of these sessions. Um, these pins are, are there. So what you'll find when you look at the blockchain transaction is there's this sort of hash pin for each message inside of the batch. I mean, it's a very efficient way to use the blockchain. So you can get a lot of a lot of performance out of the blockchain because you're writing per batch, which might contain hundreds of transactions. You're writing one transaction, it's just got this list of hashes inside of it. Okay, so so we've um, and just to refer back to blobs here. The blobs have a separate; they travel separately to the messages themselves. So in the case where we've got a private um, pinned message, in this case. Oh, sorry, a public, let's say, sorry, apologies. In this particular case, this is a broadcast. So we take a blob and the blob is gonna be put into public storage. Um, it goes first into your own local storage. And then when you send a transaction that needs that to be broadcast to everybody, we'll check if it's already been put into public storage. If it hasn't, we'll put it there. And then um, the, the data that flows with your message just has a reference to wherever it's stored in the public storage. And again, that's extensible to any public storage mechanism. It could be a, a URL to some central location. It could be um, an IPFS ID, which is the current plugin that's, that's there and provided out of the box. I'm gonna just talk a minute and we might come back to this in a future session. It is possible to do completely unrelated to blockchain trend, um, uh, messaging uh, as well. Um, that's, that's there available um, and you can give it a try. So if you need um, some things that involve the blockchains and some things for latency reasons or other reasons don't, don't need to go on the blockchain at all, you can do that. And they just get wrapped up and basically all the data that needs to go gets grouped together into an individual message and that message gets sent. Super simple. The message, details of the group because you need to know who else is in it, detail about that in the future sessions. Um, and then the data gets bundled together, but not with hundreds of other messages, right? Just, just those get bundled together and they get and they get sent. So that's how unpinned transfer works. Um, and then if we look again at pinned and we look at how blobs work in the case of um, just sending those privately, very simple. There's an operation for them and they get sent separately to the batch. Um, because they're large, it makes sense for them to have a, a separate transmission cycle. And also a good data exchange implementation um, is going to do things like chunking and, and streaming and checkpoint restart, all the things you'd expect from a managed transfer sort of protocol. Hey, Peter, right. just a quick time check, probably about five more minutes for this segment. Super, thank you very much, Nico. So we've got as far as um, all of the stuff's gone, right? And we broke it down, um, our input message groups, data, went into a batch, a few operations happened and the transaction happened. And we're going to talk a little bit more about then, and we're going to talk now about the other direction, right? I, I, I sent something in. What about when I actually want to receive information from Firefly? Um, and we're going to just talk briefly about this today, and then we're going to have whole sessions where we talk about sequencing and complexity that's involved here. And the important thing to know is, in the case of PIN transactions, so this is the most interesting case, the order on the blockchain is the truth. The order on the blockchain is the truth. It's the blockchain interface's um, uh, um, responsibility, whatever that plugin is, to do a reliable event streaming from whatever the blockchain is. So EthConnect for Ethereum does a reliable um, a collection of, of information from the blocks and transactions that are happening inside of, inside of your Ethereum network and all of those topics and, and, and logs. Um, Corda, Corda Connect does that with the, um, with the uh, Java interfaces that allow transaction streaming based on timestamp from Corda transactions. And the Fabric under development um, plugin does that with the native eventing system of, of Fabric. Right, so it's responsible for delivering them to Firefly in the same order reliably as they happened on the chain. Firefly just says, thank you very much. I've put that in order and it puts it into an ordered sequence of these pins. 
And it does that because while the order on the blockchain is the truth, whether a message is ready or not is not just did the blockchain bit arrive. The blockchain bit might arrive first, then the private data, then the blob. The blob might arrive first, then the private data, then the blockchain transaction, right? Any combination can happen. And very importantly, it's in a particular point in this, in this list. And it might be the other things before or after it that are in the same sequence have or haven't arrived. So probably one of the heaviest lifting pieces of engineering inside of the core of Firefly is the aggregator. And the aggregator's responsibility is for working out when a pin becomes ready. It's ready. All the stuff is assembled. The off-chain stuff's been aggregated together. The pin's ready. I can move on. And what does moving on mean? Moving on means turning the fact that that pin was something that I'm interested in. I had a right to see. I've got the data. It's all available. That fact becomes an event. So messages go into the system from one member, and then they come back out again as events to that same member and everybody else. And that means that everybody can process them in the same order, whether that's the person who's sent it or everybody else. So inside of Firefly, there's these two things which look a lot like queues. There's the list of pins, which is just a list since the beginning of time of everything that's been pinned. Whether I, know, whether I know I'm interested in it or not at the time of pinning it, it's an interesting thing. You don't know at the time that the pin comes in whether you're interested or not, because the other things need to come in before you can tell. Um, and then the ones that I am interested in and they're complete go into a list of events, which means we store those events only once. But that doesn't mean just one application can listen to those events. Just like anything that's in the messaging space that deals with these kinds of scenarios, we have a construct of a subscription. And the subscription is a very simple thing. It's just a pointer to a particular point in this list of events and a filter to say what events you're interested in. And then a connection to a particular transport of which we have two, web sockets and web hooks, very pluggable there, easy to plug in lots of other things down the road, um, where you can say basically every time an event happens of this type, deliver it to my applications using this transport. And then that pops up inside of your application as an event. So in a whistle stop tour, I know that's a, a very dense 30 minutes. We sort of built up to this overall picture. But what we've got is we've got, I send a message and I get events out. We're gonna talk, and maybe in a future session, we're gonna talk about how we could turn that into an API so that there's a request message and there's a response message and they need to be aggregated together. I need to wait for a response to a particular request. We're gonna talk about that in future sessions. But the fundamental model of Firefly is event-driven. Either messages or blockchain transactions or blockchain transactions caused by messages Right? All of those combinations trigger events and events trigger processing. And this is the really important thing that Firefly recognizes is that that processing is about apps. Not just the on-chain processing is important. Applications written by Node.js full stack developers who love React applications, mobile developers, um, back-end core Java developers, Developers using ESBs and, and other integration technologies on premise, very important in the ecosystem. Firefly can be that connection point where you can say, I have a core system, it wants some writes and data and broadcast it to people. Something happened on the blockchain, it turns into an event. That's the model. And then inside of the box, the sort of paddling feet of the swan under the surface here, you then have access to all of these things that need to happen for an efficient system. And Firefly, from the learning of lots of projects, has sort of said, well, actually, you're going to end up implementing all of these. We can make them a pattern. We can make them pluggable. And we can give you insight with user experience and REST API so that you can see what the heck's going on. And you can see under the covers of what, what's happening inside of the environment. And that's what we wanted to take you through today in this section was just like building up to this picture so you can see when we're talking about messages, groups, batches, operations, um, data, transactions, subscriptions, events, and pins, what the heck we're meaning. 
but actually what you care about is messages and events. Or hopefully lots of contributors on the, on the, uh, down, uh, on the line as well. And obviously you're care on extending and enhancing um, the internals of these as, as well and plugging in as well, which is a, a, another key point. Okay, how, how did I do Nico? Is that just about on time? Perfect, it was an excellent landing. All right, thank you very much for that, Peter.